much for joining us today. Um, we're here to talk about our newest suite release, the Peak Performance Suite. Uh, we'll spend a little time going through what is in it and all that sort of good stuff. Um, without further ado, um, before we start, uh, this suite has been the development of collaboration between us here at Thought Technology and, talk, and Dr. Pierre Beauchamp. Um, Pierre is the um, the founder and chairman of Mindroom Peak Sport Performance, and his resume in elite sport and uh, elite performance is, is really uh, impressive. So please feel free to go visit his website. Um, and uh, again, we're very uh, fortunate to have worked with Pierre in the development of this suite. Um, if you want to ask a question, um, there is a questions box on your GoToMeeting panel, um, or you can use the raise hand icon um, where the attendee or where, where your name is. Um, admittedly, I am terrible at monitoring both of these while I talk, so I will most likely just answer questions all together at the end, um, and then uh, that will be that. So peak performance, uh, what really are we talking about? Um, what is the premise of what we do? It's really that negative thoughts, feelings, and emotions generate a physiological response. Um, that physiological response, we call it the fight or flight response, is all of that sympathetic flow. Um, it could be cold, clammy hands, uh, increased heart rate, the lungs op opening up and our breathing increasing. Um, it could be mentally, it could manifest itself in some sort of rumination. But there, there, there is a very strong physiological response when we have negative thoughts, feelings, and emotions. If we can teach our clients to gain awareness of what is going on with themselves physiologically and give them the skills to regulate it, they're going to have a better chance for a, a better performance more consistently. Essentially, they're going to keep themselves from they're, – they're going to stop from sabotaging themselves before the performance is that even has a chance to get underway. So it's a consistency thing, and it's really about being in the right right place to perform. Um, kind of secondary to that, because we are um, hooking things up, hooking physiological sensors up, um, we're providing objective and quantifiable mental training metrics. So especially in the world of elite sport, there are tons of metrics people are looking at, and these are a way to definitely um, have some mental training metrics to, to kind of build in, inside of the organizations you're working with. Um, we're going to really go into three things. One is going to be sweet contents. So we're going to talk about the evaluations and the training options and show you a little bit of that. And then we'll show a few additional details, resources, that type of thing. And then obviously a Q&A at the end. Um, evaluations, there are five evaluations and they're, they're targeted and each do something a little bit different. The first one is a stress evaluation report. Um, from the psychophysiology side, this is pretty traditional. It's going to be a cor cornerstone of uh, what we do with performers to measure their ability to recover from stress. Um, if, you've, if you have our physiology suite, um, you've obviously seen something similar. There are a few different activities, including some task-based uh, things. Um, the second one is a best first worst performance. So when we're looking at um, within subject variability, obviously there's going to be different physiological parameters that are going to correlate to these good and bad performances. We're able to kind of take a look at that from an evaluation standpoint. Um, and then on the other side, uh, resonant frequency evaluation, um, what, at what breathing rate does the performer have the most um, heart rate variability? Um, this is going to be really uh, important in terms, of in terms of individualizing programs. So you'll be able to really maximize the efficiency of the training. Um, moving over to the right, a five-minute HRV. Um, this is designed to take a quick measure of their physiological state for the day so it could be used like like as a um, marker of recovery first thing first thing first first thing part of the day um, that type of thing but it, it'll that's what it's really designed to do and the last one is 10 minute HRV it's a uh, three steps so standing eyes open um, a, a, a sitting eyes closed and a sitting eyes open and there's going to be physiological changes associated with each of these three positions and we're going to be able to see how they react to each one. Um, so really quickly, five, five, there are five evaluations that come with the suite um, and really there each one has this kind of specific purpose. Um, the first one obviously is that stress evaluation. We mentioned that's a cornerstone. Um, we're able to see how well they recovered to baseline versus at versus when a stressful activity is induced. Um, what we'll see as we move forward in the suite is there is a, a an HRV um, 
focused in the sleep. And so things like the, the spectral frequency power, which you see on the screen in front of you, is also presented throughout each activity. So we're able to see how, what, what's going on physiologically with them from, from uh, activity to activity. You also get a table of metrics. And again, we mentioned that the, that HRV focus, and we'll see the table is, dom is dominated by those HRV metrics throughout each of the activities and recovery periods. Um, so again, really a traditional psychophysiology tool. We see a Stroop test, we see a MAT test, should be very familiar. Um, but then we see things like the like a React Track game, which is uh, um, which is a th which is, which is more task based. Next one again, best first work that that within subjects variability, we're able to met, look at each metric. Um, for a best performance versus work performance during imagery tasks. So coupled with those imagery skills or with those visualization skills, you'll be able to see what, what's going on physiologically with them. Um, on the other side, the resonant frequency, we mentioned um, the the most uh, low frequency power is what we're looking at. Um, again, a nice data report that's going to give us the actual resonant frequency breathing rate um, after we complete the assessment or after we complete the evaluation. Um, Good, good skill to have, especially if you're sending performers athletes home with, with breathing pacers, or with one of our TPSs that you can, they'll know how to set up their pacer, they'll know what breathing rate they should be breathing at, because obviously, especially with um, high-performing cardiovascular athletes, it may not be at that six breaths per minute, it may be slightly different. Um, again, I mentioned that that, that five-minute HRV uh, is perfect for evaluating how much rest a client um, had. Uh, this one, this evaluation is really designed to be done often, and it's to help really in that that performer management type, type those performer performer management type activities. So working within organizations, obviously, we want to be able to bring something to the organization as a whole that's going to help explain what we're doing to the to the organization. And this could be something that's a really simple tool to to implement. Um, obviously, with a uh, BVP sensor, it's that just Velcros around the finger. It's going to be a quick setup, um, and again, really just a quick five-minute evaluation. And then the ten-minute. We talked about the different metrics, and we just we expect different things to happen as they go from sitting to standing. The other thing that tends to happen is our um, respirational change when we when we change postural states. So, um, a good way to evaluate what's going on with them from in different postural states and, and with their eyes open and with their eyes closed. Um, really just a quick summary of the evaluations we have. Um, they're really designed to be quick and simple. Um, so most of them are below fifth, or 10 to 15 minutes. Um, it's, they're designed to help you improve athlete management. So things like that five minute HRV evaluation that are going to help you um, help manage, say, training loads, that type of thing. Um, you do have test, retest self, you can test, retest self-regulation skills with things like the um, with the stress evaluation, um, you'll be able to see how quickly they return to baseline, whether the physiological responders, non-responders, um, you really get a nice physiology snapshot with that stress evaluation, and you'll be able to come back after the fact to show them kind of the improvements they made in their ability to be resilient, which is really important for performance. And then you have those very athlete or uh, performance-specific determinations, such as a resident frequency. So again, all the the, the bundle of the, um, of the evaluation is really designed just to add um, metrics add value to what you're doing and to show progress and, and, and that type of thing. Obviously, once we conduct these evaluations, the next step is going to be training. So we're talking about training self-regulation skills. Um, and with all of our modalities, we're training clients to regulate really what are autonomic functions. So clients get, get information fed back to them in the real time and with audiovisual feedback that tells them whether they're in a specified condition or not. Um, especially early on, it's very much computer-based, so they're, they're they're getting that information back to them, whether it be audio or visual. Um, that audio or visual feedback that's going to tell them what kind of control they have, and we'll show an example later of in a performer who thought they were um, who who were who did not have enough self-awareness to realize what was going on with them as they went through different tasks and different stress events. Um, the favorites in this suite are broken up by modality. Um, so a little bit of a deviation from our traditional products. We're combining our, our, our physiological measures, our HRV, our respiration, our temperature, with our um, 
neuro, or neuro, neuro measure. So um, there is a EEG component to it that you can integrate or not, but it's broken up by modality, by what we're measuring. Um, for the most part, we're taking people from awareness of what's going on. Um, obviously, the most obvious example is respiration. If you ask someone how they're breathing, it is very apparent. They could pay attention very quickly and, and gain some feedback on that. Um, but what's not so obvious is how much um, arousal they have or how much stress do they have, say, based on how sweaty their hands are. They may not feel like there's anything there, and their hands may be dripping wet. Um, so there's that awareness factor to it. Then we get into actual self-regulation skills, so putting them, gearing them towards a specific condition. Um, and then we progress them towards a task-based regulation type activity. So continuing to breathe while they play a game, while they do some sort of com competition. Obviously, all of this goes drives towards that top tier, that's that um, translation tier towards performance. So how do they learn these skills, or how, how are they evaluated, how do they learn these skills, and then how are they able to transfer them into the performance environment, and that last step is super, super critical to what we're doing. Um, and uh, to know that the, to know they're comfortable enough with the skills to use them in these real situations without being necessarily attached to the equipment is where that translation is really going to happen. Um, quick uh, screenshot here. This is an HRV training screen, and we'll go into some live signals as well. Um, something a little bit different here. On the left, in the yellow, you have kind of the clinician side. That'd be your side. It's a lot of raw signals, and you get a frequency spectrum there for HRV, obviously. On the right side is the um, performer side, so it's what they're focusing on. You see a breathing pacer to help them with that breath, and then you see so, some of the conditions that they're trying to achieve. Um, obviously, in performance, we deal with some competitive people, so that score you see in the bottom right is fairly consistent across most of the screens. We're generating some sort of um, score, some sort of feedback that will it'll kind of help, in, help increase that client engagement. Um, so again, we're going to a client side, uh, client side, uh, cl clinician side. Um, this is another example. So this is temperature train, train screen. It's actually one of my favorites. Um, as their temperature rises, um, that light bulb on the left is going to get brighter and brighter and brighter until it explodes. When it explodes, there's an increase in score. Um, visually, that's a, it's it's nice because we, we associate light bulbs with hot, so obviously you want to warm the hands if you're dealing with, um, if you're training a stress response. Um, and again, you, you get your, your clinician side over on the left where you're, where you're showing some of the other physiological signals. You can get a kind of a rough idea of the, um, of the synchrony between the respiration and the heart rate as they go through go, go through this this training session. Um, another new thing we, we see here is on the line graph in the bottom right, we have a signal that's changing colors um, based on direction. So generally speaking, our signals usually stay the same. This time it's going to be changed. So it's going to be kind of that additional feedback. Um, this was the, the performer I, I mentioned. So during this um, training session, they were doing a um, a mental task, and so two things really jumped out, jumped out to me as as we kind of watched this unfold in front of us. The first is they have um, along the top there. There's that muscle tension um, while doing them do, doing a mental task. So that that was a signifier a signifier that there was some stress. Um, in the middle, our yellow is our skin conductance, and our green is our temperature. Um, as the task went on, as it became more stressed, we really saw that that switch when uh, when that stress level kind of started to spiral out of control. And then along the bottom, our light blue is our respiration and our red is our um, instantaneous heart rate. Um, and what we saw there was the performer really working hard in the breathing for the first half. But once they really got past that point of no return, um, if you look at the blue line, it almost flat lines for the last uh, six minutes of the training session. It was, like I said, it was super, super interesting to watch. Um, and then the follow-up with that was we, the questions that were asked of the performer afterwards were, do you feel like you were tense throughout the training? And he said, no, definitely not. I was relaxed the whole time, which is obviously negated by the uh, muscle tension. And then did you feel like you were doing your breathing throughout the, the task? And he said, yes. Um, and obviously that wasn't the case. So it kind of points to that awareness the uh, of what's going on, especially early on in, in the um, – in your discussions with your clients may not be at a level where it needs to be for them to be able to regulate, self-regulate, um, 
and really to be as resilient as they can throughout performance. And really, that was a knock on this performance. They weren't very resilient. So it, it was interesting to see that unfold and watch and see the physiology physiology reflect that. Um, so let's go into. Let's do this. Let's pull up uh, the software. And we're going to show a little bit in the software as we go. All right, so we'll start with um, this, our, our, our basic skin conductance level, our skin conductance training. Um, and so, again, we, what we get um, here live in real time is we get um, – the signals on the left for our clinician and then you get whatever the the client's supposed to focus on again we're really paying attention to that this initial awareness of what's really going on physiologically what kind of skin conductance responses are they getting um, so really attaching um, some numbers and some visuals to the feelings they're having um, and then actually point out some that they may not even know are there and then we're going to obviously build forward from that into something like a training screen. So let me do this. Um, so this training screen is is based generally on direction. Um, and so as they are in condition, the video obviously plays. Um, if we change direction, the video is obviously going to is going to stop. So we get that visual feedback. Um, we get some color coded signal based things, and again we get a score. Obviously, the next step with that is we're dealing with performance. There are optimal arousal levels that may, that are going to be individualized, and this is going to go, really going to reflect that. So it's going to give you as a clinician the ability to define an arousal level and have them work to be in that level in that level and be able to sustain it. Um, as they do, then obviously what's going to happen is this animation is going to play every time it completes. So every time you shoot an arrow, we're going to get an increase in score. Um, again, especially with athletes, um, the second you start attaching scores to things, they're going to get very competitive about things. And it's really going to increase their engagement in the training. So there's going to be some some skill building there while they're actually doing something they're engaged with and they're, they're really trying to do. And then obviously the last one is, um, is task-based. So we, we include this thing called React Track, and it's a very simple task where we just try to keep our ball, the ball centered. Um, but they have to do that while they control their physiology. Um, so again, awareness, um, some self-regulation training, then taking it to the task, and obviously the next really big step is that transfer to the field. Take a look at some other of the screens. Um, Again, we mentioned there's, it's really driven by HRV and respiration. I'll start with respiration. Um, as I mentioned, respiration is really intuitive to, to, to monitor for, for someone that's never done any self-regulation training, never done any skill training. Um, obviously, here there, it, there are some sounds. I could hear them in my ear, but you guys can't hear them. Um, but the goal, obviously, is to learn. To, the first goal is to learn to breathe slowly. Um, so that adjustment um, of breathing, say, from 15 or 18 breaths a minute down to six is an adjustment. Um, early on, the breathing is probably going to be very inconsistent. Um, and then as they move forward, it's going to be more and more consistent as they really get hold of those breathing skills. Amplitudes will be more more consistent. And the physiology is going to react as such. It's going to become more, more and more effortless. So they get that nice synchrony between the heart rate and the respiration. Um, so going forward from just breathing slowly, uh, we move to pace breathing. Um, so we mentioned that resin frequency evaluation. Well, we can set that pacer to be um, to fall in line with what, the, what that evaluation tells us. So it may not be at six, it may be at five, it may be four and a half, it may be 6.5. Again, fully customizable. They're going to get some feedback in terms of audio on, on, on this particular screen. Um, and again, they could really focus over here on our right-hand side. Um, they don't have to pay attention to the signals on the left. Really just focus on breathing, learning to breathe, learning to stay at that nice that nice pace with those effortless breaths.
And then the third one, same type of thing, except now they get the audio feedback, so they get the pace from the audio feedback that shows them when the breathing is at the right rate. Um, it's very similar to our HRV suite in that it, uh, it provides very similar visuals and, and the goal is very similar. Let's, let's breathe that at a defined rate. As they get better at it, obviously what we can do is we can bring in these thresholds to narrow how accurately they're breathing kind of in relation to their resonant frequency. So we can make things easier, harder, again, continuing levels of challenge with the, with the pace breathing. And then the last one, again, is just a task based with the pacer. Um, obviously, something that we can do that may be interesting is once we feel they really have a good grasp on their breathing, is we could really just take away the, the pacer and then see how they do. Um, again, it's, it's a nice progression that says that that will help show do they have the skills? Are they going to be transfer, transferable into a stressful environment? Um, and that type of thing. And then again, moving towards the HRV. Um, HRV obviously starts with that pace breathing right away on the, on your client side. Um, and again, there it's going to be kind of um, feedback is going to be kind of based on that respiration rate to make sure we're they're breathing where they should be in term in comparison with the pacer. And then on our left, as we move forward, what we'll see is we get that our, our frequency spectrum down here, which is really powerful in terms of looking at what what the HRV, what's really going on HRV wise with our with our metrics. Um, our next step, uh, kind of up from that, is to go into our frequency band training. So as we apply that parasympathetic break, our low frequency will go up, and our high frequency, our very low frequency, will go down. Um, and that's really the goal of, uh, of this: is to is to really have them breathe at that pace rate for an extended period of time. See how see how it's affecting their physiology. Make sure their breathing is going well with that signal that they're not reaching for their breaths either way or another, one way or another and uh, kind of building off of that and then the metrics should reinforce that again there's going to be sound associated with this once uh, on on your system itself um, the third one we start to integrate some physiology and then we take away the pacer again so really really powerful to take away the breathing pacer um, and then they're able to monitor what's going on what else is going on with the physiology so it's kind of a multi-modality um, um, training where they have to be in condition for all of the uh, with all of the modalities for them to get the feedback they want. Obviously, that uh, four to eight and a half breathing rate is pretty large, but uh, like we said, we could we can narrow that, and then we're automatically thresholding over here. Um, and then again, the last one really just goes to the same type of thing: the task-based activity, uh, and that's it. Um, on the uh, neuro side, it's going to really be driven around um, SMR and alpha. Um, so this looks like a pretty traditional neural feedback stream with the two inhibits. So your your theta, that lack of daisyness, and that beta, maybe that 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 rumination. Are your are your inhibits, and then obviously you want to increase that that alpha in general. So we're not really focused on any particular uh, alpha level, but we're really looking at um, alpha as a whole. Um, moving forward from that, we start to kind of zoom in on that that alpha peak frequency. Um, so for doing visualization exercises, um, we may want that low alpha if we're doing um, actual activity, you may want to stay in that high alpha SMR range, and so you're able to train uh, up to a, a, a specific um, alpha level. So we're, again, here we're just looking at what our dominant alpha frequency is. And then we get into SMR, so really very similar conceptually with your rewards and your habits, but you're training that SMR band. Um, again, you do have our visual feedback, and there is audio feedback uh, attached to it as well. On your side, you do have um, indicators of eye muscle tension artifact. Um, so those are those are obviously a part of it, and then you you do get some some specific um, 
kind of trending that's going on over the course of the session over here on the left. Obviously, everything's coordinated between the left and the right there, so we, we know exactly what band is going where over kind of kind of over the course of the session. And then our last one is going to be um, your training HR. Really, I'll say advanced training wise, you're doing HRV training with the EEG training. Um, and you're really teaching them to shift between relax and tense. So we're talking state shifts. Um, from a sports side, we may be talking being able to hit a shot in golf and then then switch into a relaxed state right away. So be able to shift between that relax and attentive state um, efficiently to help them to help them improve the performance. Again, over here you do have some inhibits. It's very easy to kind of take them out of play if you don't want them to mess, if it's too much to pay attention to, or you could also make it a bit of a challenge and they, they're going to get the feedback about what they're doing. And then the last, last modality we'll look at is going to be our EMG. Um, it's going to revolve around a, f a few things. One is obviously going to be muscle relaxation. So you're going to have a left and right, and they're both going to be under threshold to get the feedback. Um, the second is going to be similar type thing, a relaxation training. So what we know about muscles, they both have to be under a five. And when we're in condition, obviously our guy is going to play. When one falls out of condition, it's going to slow down or, or stop completely. There we go. Um, it's going to stop completely. So again, when we're in condition, we'll get that positive feedback. We'll really get those positive reinforcement loops. And we fall out of condition, we'll see what happens. And then again, for you on this side, you're going to be able to make the correlation between other physiological measures versus what they're focused on with their training. Um, and then we move to kind of muscle balance. So they're obviously for applications for um, ratios uh, left, right. And that's really what this is looking at. If they're in balance, then the ball is going to stay center. Obviously, if one is dominating over the other one, then the ball is going to move. And then lastly, again, we go to that kind of that task-based activity and, and go from there. Um, I won't talk about temperature only because it's going to be really the same thing as um, as the skin conductance. So we're going to go from awareness to regulation to uh, more advanced task-based things. Um, we do have artifact correction screens, obviously, um, but if you already have biograph, you know that. And then there are review screens that are going to look at um, that are going to look at kind of di different aspects of of the session. So we're able to look at the signals as a whole, where we can take out, say, something that we determined to be an artifact. Um, this is more geared towards epochs. So what's what? What are the epoch means over the sessions? What are the general trends of the session? Um, and then to like full physiology monitor. So this is really pure raw signals that we're we're, we're looking at here. Um, you can uh, obviously we can zoom in. So if we if we do have the software, we can zoom in and look at things in more detail. Again, this is a biograph feature, not necessarily peak performance feature, but we have there are tools in there that are going to help you analyze the data. They're going to help you look at what you want to do. And then you're able to pull up um, a set of stats and kick out a report from the training session. That may look like that. So what we get kind of as well is we get a table of, uh, of metrics, um, and then we get those individual graphs that were on our screen before. So we're able to kind of, we're able to take a look at something, we're able to do some training sessions, and really get a quick snapshot of what went on. Um, obviously, we don't have to choose all of these metrics. We can choose what's most relevant to what we were doing that day as part of the report. Um, and I think in total that took me a minute or two. So really super efficient ways to get reports on open sessions. And then we we had mentioned the the evaluation reports. And those just those those will come up out of Excel, so we get something like 
something like this. Then you'll also get um, some EEG metrics as well. So frequency band averages throughout each of the activities as well. So we'll see if they just if they get stressed out, say during the math task, and they just stay in high beta the rest of the time through, and they weren't able to recover. That may be indicative of something else, something else to train, something else to pay attention to, that type of thing. So um, on our website at, at thoughttechnology.com, we do have system packages that can serve as a template. Um, we have a starter system that's really based on the HRV suite. Um, and then our intermediate and expert systems will, will really integrate this peak performance suite that we, that we kind of just took, took a quick peek at. Um, the expert systems start to integrate our reaction time um, protocols as well, or our reaction time suite as well. Um, and so the, really that's the difference between the intermediate and the expert. But as a standalone product, the peak performance suite in terms of training self-regulation, having the tools to evaluate, train, report back on, on the training and the evaluations, um, that intermediate system it, it is, really a, it is really strong for that self-regulation side. So now I will go to um, questions. Okay. Um, so, general neuro question on the alpha screen, which screens are used for training? Um, everything is designed to be used at CZ. Um, another question is, are, is our performance really just focused on athletics? No. Um, internally, we, we've identified performance into, into those other realms that you mentioned. Patricia, um, arts, music, dance. Um, so the performing arts for sure. Um, you can send it to to military, um, executive functioning. Um, so it, it is much more than athletics um, in terms of what we consider a performance environment. Um, equipment encoder and sensors. So the the peak performance suite um, runs on a ProConf Infinity. So that's our eight channel unit. Um, and you're really looking at a, a pretty full lineup of sensors. You're looking at a heart rate measurement, either EKG or BVP. You're looking at um, two EMG sensors, skin conductance, temperature, uh, one respiration, and one EEG sensor. Um, Paulo, yes, the they can be useful for music or dance. So one of the number one things we this suite is designed to deal with is um, pre-performance anxiety. Um, uh, is pre-performance pre anxiety. So obviously that's going to happen across many performance environments. So that where it'd be most applicable. If you're talking about something like music and dance, there may be some self-regulation opportunities um, between sets when the curtains um, when the curtains go down temporarily, or when the when the artist is uh, off is off stage. So yeah, there there is there is definitely a use for that for those other for for other performance um, environments. There is not any database attached to it. Um, the question is, is there any assessment using a database? Um, the answer is no, it's not, it's not attached to any particular database. Um, with a lot of the metrics we're looking at, especially things like skin conductance, there's a lot of individual variability. So it's a lot of with, within subjects comparisons that are going on. What do you see as the biggest differences between this suite and Sue Wilson's? Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Sue Wilson has an optimizing performance and health suite with the BFE. Um, and it's actually, it's actually a really good suite. I, I, I like a lot of things about it. Um, I think from from my seat, the evaluations um, are a little more in-depth, a little more geared to, towards what's going on in the performance environment at, at this point in the peak performance suite. Um, and I think Sue suite, um, does a lot, uh, has a lot more depth in terms of, uh, of the neurofeedback side, um, I think. And, and so I, I, I identified those as the primary differences. You're measuring a lot of the same things, and but I think there's a, a little more depth on the neuro side with Sue stuff. And I, I think the evaluations and some of the HRV stuff we'll look at it on the peak performance side are, are, are a little bit improved. If we have no more questions, we're going to, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, for the session. Um, if you do have, uh, oh, one more just popped up. 
um, how can I test self-regulation skills with this suite? Um, a cornerstone for testing self-regulation skills is going to be that, that, that stress evaluation. So it's pretty common throughout psychophysiology. Um, and what we're, what, what we're doing is we're seeing how well they're able to recover from the stressors and how well they're able to kind of bring themselves back to a baseline. So that evaluation is going to be critical for that. Is our recommended number of training sessions? Um, it's going to really depend on, on what you're training. Um, without getting into too much clinical detail. Um, things like respiration that are very tangible for, for the user are gonna obviously be trained faster than things that are intangible, like say an alpha level. Um, so Shantae, if I was to ask you what your alpha level is today, you may not be able to tell me. Um, but if I ask you how you're breathing, you'll be able to pay attention to that right away. So there, there, there are variances in that, um, but that's gonna dive a little bit more on the clinical side than we're gonna go today. Can it be self-administered? Um, Yes, yes, I hook myself up to this machine all the time in, at my desk, um, and I see how terrible I am at re regulating um, my own physiology. Um, no, it, it, you, can, you can definitely hook yourself up. The, the caveat to that is because we are medical products, you do have to be in a uh, licensed health practitioner, is the way we phrase it internally here, in order to be able to buy the system in the first place. But yes, you can do, you could do things on your own fairly, fair, fairly easily. All right. So thank you all very much for joining us. Um, we really appreciate your support. Please come visit us on the web. Follow us on social media at www.thoughttechnology.com. Give us a call if you have questions um, or shoot us an email, mail at thoughttechnology.com. Uh, my name is Lucas, so if you change my name, Lucas, L-U-C-A-S, with the mail, you can also email me directly. Um, Please don't hesitate to reach out to us if we need to have a more in-depth conversation. We can talk about pricing. We talk about what different people are doing with it, um, and we'll, we'll, we could spend a little bit more time talking about how it could implement better with, with all the work you're doing. Thank you again for your time, and we'll look forward to talking with you soon.